Hello, I'm Steve Grizzetti, co-founder of MoviePicks.com and author of the MoviePicks.com guides to Adobe Premiere Elements 15 and Adobe Photoshop Elements and Premiere Elements together. And here we are in part four of our eight part series on basic training with Premiere Elements 15. The process of getting from clip to clip on your timeline is called transitioning. Now, a lot of the times what we use is a basic cut. That's still a transition, but a basic cut from clip to clip just means that one clip ends and another one begins. But there are also other ways to get from clip to clip on your timeline. Now, the most basic transition is the fade, the fade in and out. And the fade is very easy to create here in Premiere Elements. To fade in at the beginning of a clip, you simply select the clip on your timeline, right click on it, Go up here to fade, and there are a number of fade options. You can fade in just the audio, just the video, or both. Fade out just the audio, just the video, or both. Or fade in at one end of the clip and fade out on the other with a single click. We're going to fade in the audio and video. And when we do, you'll notice down on the timeline something has happened. These little keyframes have been created. These yellow lines here, by the way, are called rubber bands. They represent levels in your clip, so on your uh, video. That rubber band represents opacity or transparency. And on your audio, they represent the level of sound on your audio. And this keyframe is at 100% here. Here it is at 0%. So this is no audio. This is no video. And you can see that the slope between them is what creates your fade in. So creating a fade in or fade out at the end of a clip, which is pretty much the same process, right click on the clip and select the option to fade in or fade out. It's that simple. Now that's the basic fade in and fade out. That's sort of like curtains opening and closing between acts in a play. But there are more elaborate transitions also that you can add between your clips. One thing to point out is you can work in expert view or in quick view. In quick view, you have a rather limited library of transitions. You'll find them over here on the toolbar. Just click on the transitions button. And this is the entire library of transitions available in Quick View. It's only about 16 transitions. On the other hand, when you're in Expert View, you will have several categories of transitions. So you have a much larger library of transitions and options available. So I'm going to select the wipe here, and I'm going to simply drag a transition down between two clips. There is an important concept I need to show you here Without confusing you too much, I do want to point out that see these two clips on the timeline? That in the upper right hand corner of this clip and in the upper left hand corner of this clip, you'll see a little gray sort of a, an angular flag on there. That indicates that the clip has not been trimmed at all. Notice if I trim the clip like this, that goes away. But if your clip is fully unspooled, or is entirely visible on your timeline, you'll get a little indicator here. Now that indicator can cause you problems when you add a transition. I'll show you what I mean here in just a moment. First, let's just add a transition. We're gonna add the band wipe to it. You drag it down there. That's how simple it is. You can select the duration for the transition. You can select where it sits between the clips. In most cases, you wanna put it directly between the clips. And if you click on the more button and scroll down, you'll see some other options. So for instance, you can select whether or not there is a border between the two clips and the transition. Now my band wipe is going to have, well, let's look at what the band wipe is. We can reopen this in a second. Our band wipe is simply transitioning from clip to clip using these little bars that slide in, right? The bars slide in like that, and when they meet, we've transitioned to our second clip. So we can control some things about that. I'm just gonna double click on the transition again and go down here to more and scroll down to the bottom. And you can see we can select whether or not there's a border simply by oh, changing that number. That adds a border around the bands, so we can set that back to zero. We can select the color of the border, or if it reverses, in other words, uh, we have bars coming in from the side for the transition, and reversing it may make those bars, for instance, we transition from the center outward or something. And if we click on the custom button here, a number of these transitions have customs options. When we click on custom, we can select how many bands there are. So right now, by default, there are seven bands moving in from the side. We can change that number to say 16. I think there is a threshold to how many bands you can have. 
but you can see we can customize the look of the transitions. And depending on which transition you select, there are a number of great customizations. But I do want to show you one thing very, very important to understand about transitions. And to make the point clear, I'm actually going to expand the duration of my transition. Right now it's set for one second. We could change it here. You can also simply come out here to the timeline and just drag it to make it longer. Notice that because our clips are fully unspooled, this first clip ends right here at the seam between the clips. And the second clip ends right there at the seam between the clips. But the problem is that during a transition, there are periods in which both clips are on screen at the same time. So in other words, right here before this seam, there is about a second, because I've expanded this out to about two seconds long, there's about a second in which this second clip is on screen before it actually hits the video or before it actually begins the live portion of video. And the same thing when we come over here to the other side, this first clip is still on screen for a couple of seconds or for a second or so as it's transitioning into the second. Well, we don't have any video beyond the end or beyond the beginning of this clip. So what happens? Look carefully, and I don't know if it's real obvious on this, but what you get is a freeze frame. In other words, prior to the beginning of this clip, the train, the top of the train is frozen right up until we get to this point in the clip. It's frozen. Now, it may be a little more obvious. We can see the conductor walking through the train here. Once we get to here, he becomes a freeze frame. Now, this may not have been obvious in this particular case, but if you've got a lot of action in your video, it's going to be real obvious that you have a freeze frame occurring in order to create the transitional segment. You don't want that most of the time. And here's how to make that go away. I'm just going to select the transition and delete it. I just want to trim back a second or so from this clip. That means now this clip has a second or so of extra footage to the left of it. Likewise, this first clip, I'm going to trim it back. And now we have a second or so of footage beyond the end of the clip. And the program can use those to build our transition. So now when I add my band wipe, You'll notice that I never have a point where there's a freeze frame. All the way through the transition, there's motion because there's enough extra footage for the transition to uh, use that extra footage to create the transitional segment. Understanding that will save you a world of headaches. But we talk about all of that and explain why it happens in the book, as well as the tips and tutorials that are available at moviepicks.com. Be sure to check out our books. They're available on Amazon.com. I'm Steve Grisetti. Hope to see you for part five.